Welcome to our very first knit along for Independence Street yarns. We are lovingly going to call them street alongs because they used to be called bliss alongs when we had fabric bliss going. Um, but also we're calling them street alongs because they're not just knit alongs, they're also crochet alongs too, depending on the project that we're doing. So. Uh, welcome to our first street along for Independent Street Yarn. Uh, my name is Aurora and you can follow me on Instagram at Aurora Talks Knit. I will have photos of progress and links to my YouTube videos um, and all that kind of stuff for all the support videos that I do for all of the street alongs that we're going to do for Independent Street Yarns. So this is our first one and it is a knit along and it is for a hat called the Lake Reed Hat. Now we passed this hat around at Whip Night, which is our local meetup here in Denver. Um, and it fit everyone. Um, whether you had a small head or a big head, it totally fit, which is really great. It's super stretchy. It's definitely a one size fits all hat. So I really love it. Um, it's also good to teach on because we're going to learn how to do cables. And I'm gonna show you how to cable without a cable needle. I'm gonna show you how to do, um, how to read charts. Uh, and we're also going to do a super fancy cast on called the tubular cast on, which is really painful, but oh my God, it's so amazing. It's really worth it. It's one of those you have to look up every time. So I'll make you a video for it. Um, the yarn that I'm using is this Yakety Yak. Of course, it's by Independent Street Yarn. Uh, it's a DK weight. It's a blend of Merino 20% silk. Oh my gosh. And 15% yak. This is amazing. So really you can use any DK weight that you would like to, but if you want to win the prizes for the bliss along, you do need to use independent street yarn. But, um, otherwise any DK weight in your stash will work. You will also need stitch markers. I have this cute little tin here that I got from independent street. And these stitch markers also work great for crochet, which is why I love them so much. And I also have a pair of size eight needles to do this on. Okay, so this is a 16 inch size eight needles. So once you have all the supplies you need, it's time to cast on. So without further ado, let's talk about the tubular cast on in the round. The tubular cast on is a lot of steps. Um, the first thing the pattern says is to cast on 110 stitches in the tubular. So um, they do reference a video that you can watch on YouTube, which is a different method than what I'm going to show you. I think this one's easier. The way you have to wrap your fingers in that video is so confusing and I can never get it right. So we're going to do something similar to what they did, but we are going to actually do the backwards loop cast on first and then we're going to add in yarn. So I'm going to start with waste yarn. Now when you do the tubular cast on, you only cast on half the number of stitches. So the pattern says um, it's 110 stitches, so half of that is 55. All right, so I've got some waste yarn right here. I'm just going to make a slip knot to start with. So I'm going to kind of make a loop just like this. And then I'm going to take the long end and put it through and I'm going to pull like that. So that way I've got my slip knot. I'm going to get my needles and I'm going to just pull on the long end to tighten it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to do the backwards loop cast on. So I'm just going to twist this around this way. So see how there's like a little smile in the front. So you want to then make sure the smile is in the front. If I turn it like this, this is incorrect. The smile is in the back, see that? So I'm gonna go like this and we have a cute little smile here in the front and then I'm gonna slip that over the needle and I'm gonna pull. Now you don't wanna pull it too tight. You want it to be just a little bit of movement on there so that you can uh, get your needle in there when you do the next step. Let me move that out of here. Okay, so we're gonna twist this way so the smile is in front and then we're gonna slip this on. So there's three and there's four. And I'm just gonna keep going like this until I have 55 of these on my needle. Oh, I did fail to mention earlier that um, we also need a 16 inch circular US size six. So that's what we're using here to do the cast on. This cast on can be pretty loose. So we're stepping down um, to a size six in order to do this cast on and also to do the ribbing. So the ribbing is nice and tight on your head and then we'll switch to the size eight. 
Okay, coming to my last two. And this makes 55, just like that. Okay. And no, you uh, do not have to adjust your um, screen. I did get a manicure in between takes. <laughs> my nails are different. So much for continuity. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it around. And even though we're gonna end up working in the round because of a hat, with this particular cast on, we have to work back and forth. So I'm gonna swing it around this way like this. And then we are going to work our next row. <clears throat> so our next setup row, we're gonna we're gonna switch to the yarn you're actually using for the hat. And we're just gonna use the waist yarn in order to um, do the cast on. So we are going to grab our real color and we're going to knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, all the way to the end. So we'll get our <clears throat> yarn in here. And Here's the yarn I was using. I'm just gonna let that hang there and I'm gonna reach in here and knit. And what I like to do when I change colors is I like to just make a loop like this. So I'm gonna take this loop and I'm just gonna stick it over my right needle like that and I'm gonna knit with it. And then this one, of course, I'm gonna pull a little tighter because it's coming off. Get on there. And then I'm gonna in, oh, and then I've gotta do a yarn over. <clears throat> this is always confusing to me. Oh, but now I wanna drop my tail. There we go. So now the first one's on there, I'm gonna yarn over, and then I'm gonna go into the next one, and I'm gonna tug this nice and tight, and then I'm gonna do a knit stitch like this, and then I'm gonna do a yarn over. Then I'm gonna go into the next one, I'm gonna do a knit stitch, and then I'm gonna do a yarn over. And you're gonna continue like this all the way to the end. And what is happening is for every one stitch, you're making two because you're going to knit into this stitch. So you're technically, this is the increase row, yarn over. And of course the backwards loop tightens up. This is a little bit difficult. So this first row is fiddly but just get all the way to the end and then we're gonna turn around and we're going to do the next setup row after that. I'm getting down to the last of my stitches. The last stitch I have to do is the um, slip stitch that I started with. And of course I can't really yarn over after this. So this last one, I'm just going to knit just like that, okay? So this looks frighteningly messy and it's okay. It is a little bit messy, but we have a couple more setup rows to do. Now, keep in mind, we were supposed to cast on 110 stitches. So that means for every stitch, we had to increase two. At the end, we had a yarn over, which we have to skip because it's the end of a row. So keep in mind that this cast on, you always end up with an odd number of stitches which is not a big deal because we all know how to make one. So we'll be making one after we do the setup rows though. We have to do all the setup rows first, then we can add our next stitch and we can get to an even number. Okay, so our next setup row, um, <clears throat> we're going to slip one with the yarn in front and knit one all the way to the end. All right, so I'm gonna turn this over. We're still working back and forth and I'm gonna try to spread this out. <clears throat> We gotta make sure that as we go, all of the waist yarn is on the bottom of the needles here. We don't want anything flipping over. See right there, you can tell it twists. Because this is such a mess, it definitely twists on you. So you just wanna make sure and straighten it out as you go. Okay, so now we are going to slip one with the yarn in front. So I'm just gonna put the yarn in the front of the needle like this. I'm gonna slip one with yarn in front, and then I'm gonna move the yarn between the goal posts, which is the tips of the needles, to the back. And then I've got a yarn over here. See the yarn over? So I'm gonna knit this yarn over. I'm gonna bring it back to the front, and I'm gonna slip, and then I'm gonna bring it back to the back, and I'm gonna knit. Bring it to the front, slip, bring it to the back, knit. 
Now it's very easy to accidentally bring it to the front and then try to purl because that's the motion. So these setup rows are very important. Just go nice and slow. Make sure you're in a quiet spot. We're going to knit one, bring the yarn to the front, slip, bring it to the back, knit one, bring it to the front, slip one. Okay, and make sure that this is nice and firm in here. You don't want these to be loose. You want these to be actually just a little bit tight when you're doing this so you get that nice rounded edge. Okay, so we're going to knit and then we're going to bring to the front and we're going to slip. We're going to do this all the way to the end. Until we do our last few getting kind of squirrely here. This is twisting on me, so let's make sure that goes over the top. That's a yarn over, so I'm going to knit that one, bring it to the front, slip, twist this all around. This is a yarn over, so we knit, bring it back to the front, and we'll slip this one, bring it to the back, knit, bring it here, slip, and then the last one has just gotten twisted. So, oh, it fell off my needle. So the last one is a knit. Get the hook on. Come here. Okay, this is a mess. Is that crazy? Okay. But everything is on here, so that's wonderful. Actually, this last one is not correct. I grabbed that one and it shouldn't be on there. That was just an extra one. Your last one should be a slip. We started with a slip and you should end with a slip. So I grabbed that one and put it on the needle even though it didn't need to be. Okay, and you can always double check the amount of stitches that you have at this point if you'd like to count them and make sure you have like 109. That should be good. Now you might have to execute this a few different times because this one is a little bit difficult. So I do show this particular tubular cast on in quite a bit more detail in my Craftsy class that is called 40 Ways to Cast On and Bind Off. And in the notes of this video and on the blog post for this video is a link so that you can get it for 50% off. So instead of being 30 bucks, the class is 15 bucks. So um, I show it in both continental and um, the traditional knitting styles, and I show it both left and right handed also. So that might be helpful for you if you're having a hard time doing this one and you're left handed. So go check out my craftsy class called 40 Ways to Cast On and Bind Off and look for the tubular cast on. It's awesome. Okay, so we've done our first setup row and now we have to do another setup row. So we're still not working in the round yet. We're going to turn it over and we're going to do a knit one, slip one with yarn in front. So it's basically the same row, just opposite. Instead of starting with a slip one, we're starting with a knit one. All right, here we go. So we're going to flip this guy over. I'm going to find not my tail. So annoying. Okay, <clears throat> here's the yarn. All right, so now this last one I slipped. Remember the last one was a slip, so this time I'm gonna knit it. So I'm gonna knit this one and it's gonna be loose because it's got my tail here. So pull on my tail a little bit here. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna bring the yarn back to the front. I'm gonna slip this one back to the back, knit this one back to the front, slip back to the back and knit. And we're going to do this all the way across, just like we've been doing. This is setup row two. All right, down to the last two here. I'm going to slip this one. And we started with a knit, so we're going to end with a knit on this row, just like that. Okay, so something cool is happening down here. Okay, you can see your waist yarn is just kind of pooling up, but something pretty neato is happening. If you kind of roll through it, you can see that there's some loops of this red yarn here that look kind of interesting. So now what we're going to do is to really make this cast on nice and tight and firm, we're going to repeat setup row two 
uh, sorry, we're going to repeat uh, set up row three and four. Okay, so step one was the backwards cast on loop. Step two was the increase row. Step three was the setup row. And then step four was the opposite setup row. Okay, so we're going to do step three and step four again. So we're going to do the last two setup rows. So I'm going to turn it over again. I'm going to do a slip one with the yarn in front, knit one all the way across. Then I'm going to turn it around again and I'm going to do a knit one, slip one with yarn in front all the way across. So I'm going to hurry and bust that out and then I'll meet you there when it's done. Okay, I've gotten through all of my setup rows. I have this really super cool looking thing right here. So before we cut the yarn out of here, let's join in the round. I've also counted all of my stitches and I am exactly one stitch short. So we're gonna go ahead and add one right before we join in the round. So right here at the end, I am just going to insert, I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna pull one up, and I'm just gonna throw it on there, okay? That's it, easy peasy. All right, so now I need a stitch marker because we're gonna join in the round. I'll use green since we have a whole bunch of red going on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna join in the round, which means I need to turn it over so that my live yarn is in my right hand, unless you're a left-handed knitter, and then it's the other way around. Now I'm gonna scoot everything up here like this so that make sure it is not twisted so all of the waste yarn is to the inside okay all right that looks pretty good now i'm going to grab this guy here i'm going to place my stitch marker now we have to read the stitches so if you look at these stitches over here it looks like the first one, let's see, so this, if you look at them carefully, these right here look like knits, and this guy here, this one here, looks like a pearl, this guy right there. So I like to find my way back here. So this is a knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit. So the first stitch I'm gonna do is a knit stitch, okay? Cause this is a ribbed cast on and it's a nice stretchy one too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and join in the round and we're gonna knit this very first stitch. Let me get this stuff a little closer. All right, so I'm gonna get in there and we're gonna knit that first stitch. And now you can actually purl. How about that? And now we are joined in the round and we have done our um, tubular cast on, which just so happens to be a rib. And in the pattern, it says to work in one by one rib until you have 10 centimeters. And so that is exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna get through this round so that we're joined in the round, and then we're going to cut out the excess yarn so we can reveal the gorgeous tubular cast on. All right, I've done my very first round of Knit One Pearl One, uh, and I've joined in the round, so let's take a look at it. So you can see here, there is quite a big gap right there. Okay, you are going to use the tail of your yarn to sew that gap shut. So the weird part about this tubular cast on is that it has to be worked flat for several rows in order to get those ro rows to round at the bottom. So you have to work it flat and then you have to join it in the round, which makes a little gap, but we all have darning needles and we just sew it shut real easy. All right, so now it's time to get rid of all this waste yarn. So I'm just gonna reach in here with my scissors and very carefully, without snipping the real yarn, I'm going to just cut between the loops here, like this. Set my scissors aside and I'm just gonna pull the waste yarn out, just like that, okay? And let me just kind of move this around here. 
And you can see what a cool thing that makes. See how those stitches just round right over? Isn't that just so neat? Just like that. So you're going to go ahead and go around and cut all of these loops and expose this really lovely cast on right there. And we'll have a better picture of it when the whole thing is done. But it just is so lovely how those stitches just round right over the bottom. So you don't really have a front and a back here to your work. You just have this lovely tubed cast on. And this is a cast on that if you look at some of the commercial clothes that you, uh, you know, buy from Target or whatever that are manufactured, they usually the sleeves have that exact same nice rolled uh, cast on. So anyway, now that you know how to do that uh, and we've got the cast on down, uh, once you pick out all of the pieces of your yarn, please don't cut your work because then you'll have to start all over. Um, then you're going to work in one by one rib until you have, I think it was eight centimeters, 10 centimeters, or really however much ribbing you desire. So I am going to go cuddle up and get my eight or my 10 centimeters of ribbing. And then we will come back and start to talk about fancy things such as cables. So please take your time with this cast on. If you find that it didn't work out the first time, sometimes you need a few more tries and you might have to go through some waste yarn um, or you'll find a mistake and you'll pull the waste yarn and something will unravel because you missed a slip or you purled accidentally. It's definitely uh, um, a high maintenance cast on. So be patient with yourself and keep trying. I'm gonna go do some ribbing and I'll see you in a little bit at Cables. Okay, we're done with our ribbing and it's time to switch to the larger needle and to do our increase row. So I, there's two ways you can switch to your larger needle. You can either grab the larger circular needle, the eight, and knit off of the six during this round, or you can do what I did here, which is just pass everything off of the smaller needle onto the bigger needle. Um, I find that easier. I get a little bit confused. I need to concentrate on one thing at a time. Okay, so um, we have to do a little math here because the pattern says that we have to add 10 stitches to this hat, okay? So there's a little trick to this. Um, what you do is you take the number of stitches that you have to add, which is 10, and you add one to it, which makes 11. Then you divide the current number of stitches that you have on your needles, which right now is 110. You divide that by 11, and that gives you the number 10. So that means every 10 stitches, we are going to do an increase. This works on pretty much anything. Um, let me show you a little diagram of what I mean here. <clears throat> so let's say here is your knitting, okay? and you have to add in, let's say two stitches into this row of knitting, okay? So you don't wanna add it right at the beginning and right at the end because then those two will be right next to each other. So you wanna add like one here and one here. So effectively, that divides this into three pieces. So then what you do is if you divide it by three instead of by two, then you effectively divide it into three pieces and then you knit for X amount, make an increase, knit for X amount, make an increase, knit for X amount, and then you're done. Okay, so that's how you, you're gonna add them. Okay, that was really nerdy and boring and off we go. So now, um, let me finish this round here. All right, so let's see, I have a pearl. I didn't want my stitch marker to fall off when I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so I'm gonna pass this. So I'm going to knit for 10 stitches, and, and this round you're just gonna knit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so now I'm going to make one. Now you can make one stitch kind of however you want to. Um, you can do a make one left, make one right. 
Um, I just like to do a knit front back because it's easy. So this is a knit front back. So I'm just gonna knit in the front. I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna bring my needle to the front, but I'm gonna leave this stitch over here on my left needle. Now I'm gonna very carefully take my right needle and put it behind the left needle, okay? And I'm going to try to get through this back loop right here. I realize we have red yarn on red needle, so it's hard. See this back loop right here? I'm gonna go right underneath that. Let me jam it under there and then I'll show you what that looks like. See how I got under that back loop right there? Okay, so now I'm under that, so I'm gonna knit again. So I just increased one stitch, okay? So this one stitch now has two in it. So we have the one that's knit, and then we have this one that was through the back loop, and it kind of looks a little bit like a pearl. So if you don't want that little bit of a look like a pearl on the front, then you can do a make one left or a make one right, and then it won't quite be so obvious, but um, it's a hat, this ribbing is gonna fold over, so all of these little inconsistencies it's gonna hide. Okay, so I am going to continue to knit 10, and then I'm gonna make one front Back. I'm going to knit front back in order to make one until I get all the way around and then once you're done with that count and make sure that you have 120 stitches. Sweet! So I did all my increases and I double checked my work by counting to make sure I had 120 because it's really sad if you don't check and then you start to do your pattern and you don't have enough stitches and then life is just really, really terrible. Okay, so we are going to work um, the chart pattern. So let's take a second and talk about charts. Um, if you are new to charts and you've always just been looking at the written out piece, it's super duper easy and I'll show you how. All right, so here is chart one. So our instructions in the uh, pattern say to work, so the chart is over 30 stitches. So that means that we're gonna repeat it four times around um, in the pattern because there's 120 stitches. Then it says to work the whole chart twice and then you're gonna start it again and stop on row six. So let me show you what that means. All right, so here's our chart. So down, you always start at the bottom right and you work left like this, okay? So the opposite direction that we read and then you go up like this. And this particular chart is really helpful because it has a one and a one right here so you know where you're starting, okay? So <clears throat> we are gonna start here, we're gonna do every single row all the way up here times one then we're going to start back down here and work it again then we're going to start back down here a third time but we're going to stop at row six right there okay all right so let me bring the key into frame here so this dot is a purl so we are going to purl two then we're going to knit through the back loop is the next one let me use this because my finger's kind of big knit through the back loop then we're going to purl two. Then we're going to do this cool K2 together knit thing. We're going to do that twice. Then we're going to purl two. Then we're going to knit through the back loop. Then we're going to purl two. And then we're going to knit one, two, three, four. Then we're going to do this cable. And then we're going to do this cable. And then we're going to knit four. And then we're done with our round. Now, after each section of the chart because we're going to work it four times I like to place a stitch marker so that if I'm watching TV or I'm I'm like sort of paying attention to my pattern if I reach the stitch marker and I haven't got all the way through the stitches on the chart I know I've done something wrong um, so we're going to do that also all right so let's pull this out of the way and let's bring in our knitting Okay, we'll kind of keep this on screen here. Let me move this over here so you guys can see. Oh, and of course, I have a big barf in my yarn. That's funny. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is two purls. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to bring this to the front. And we're going to purl one. And we're going to purl two. Now, the next thing is knit through the back loop. Okay, 
So that looks like this. Instead of coming into the front piece, we're going to go through the back piece like this. See that? We're going to go in the back just like that. We're going to do a yarn over and then we're going to knit. Okay. Now, see how this is twisted? The stitch I just did, it's twisted so it'll kind of make it pop off the knitting quite a bit better. All right, so now we're going to do purl two, purl one, purl two. All right, now we're going to do this crazy thing called K2 together knit. Okay, so it's like a decrease, except we don't want a decrease here because there isn't another increase. So when you knit two together, just like this, normally what you do is you pull your entire needle off and then these two stitches get knitted as if they were one. But instead, we're going to leave them both on the needle. We're going to go back into the first stitch like this and we're going to perform a knit, just like normal, but only through that stitch. Then we're going to lift the knit stitch off the needle and also the other one that we had knit together, like that, okay? So even though this um, is not actually a cable, it looks like a cable, so it's like a fake cable. So there's a lot of different slip stitches that uh, can make things look like a cable. So that's just a fun little faux way and you'll see how it works as we keep going. All right, so we've done that. We have to do it one more time. It says right here in the chart that we have to do it a second time. So we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna knit two together, just like this. We're gonna pull our needle out. We're gonna put it back under the first one, the one closest to the needle edge. Then I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to bring it back through that one stitch, and then I'm going to go ahead and slip both of them off like that, okay? And that is done. Okay, so now we have to do two purls. So we're going to purl, purl, we're going to bring the yarn to the back, we're going to knit through the back loop, and then we're going to purl, and then we're going to purl. Alright, so now our chart says that we are going to knit these first four right here, okay? So I'll move that out of the way, and I'm going to knit four. One, two, three, four. Cool. All right, now we're going to perform this cable right here, okay? This cable is, let's find the matching over here, it's a two by two right cable. Okay, now it's called a right cable here because the ones in front are leaning to the right right there. Okay, so this cable means that you have to hold stitches in the back. If you look at the definition, let me bring that in really quick. Okay, so the right cable. Slip two stitches to a cable needle and place at the back of work, knit two, and then knit two from cable needle. All right, so let's see how that works. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, now I don't have a cable needle. I normally just use a double pointed needle, which is fine with me, but also the thing I like to do is I prefer to um, knit do my cables without a cable needle. So I'm going to show you how to do it the traditional way with a cable needle and then we're going to do it without the cable needle, which is a little bit faster uh, but a wee bit scary. Okay, so we're going to take these first two stitches and we're going to slip them to the cable needle, okay? We're going to hold them in back, which means I just want to take my cable needle and put it behind the work, just like that, okay? Now, I'm going to carefully drop that and let it hang there. And you can see that when I knit this stitch and this stitch off of the next needle, this yarn is in front, okay? So if this yarn is in front and this is in back, we're good to go. So now I'm going to, and this gets real fiddly and weird, so I'm just going to try to get this out of the way and I'm going to wrap around the red needle. I'm going to knit one and then I'm going to knit two just like that, okay? All right, now I have to knit these two from the cable needle. So my cable needle's hanging out there. I'm gonna try to straighten it back out like this. And then I'm going to slide this needle down. 
I'm gonna forget about this needle. I'm just gonna let it sit there and now I'm using this needle and this needle, okay? So I'm gonna go like this and I'm going to knit one from the cable needle and knit two from the cable needle, okay? So let's see what happened. So you can see here that this cable is over four stitches and two of them are now leaning this way. Now when they're on the needle like this, they look really stretched and they don't look fun. So after you get a couple rounds away, that will relax and it will look a lot nicer, okay? So let's quickly back out of this and I'm gonna show you how to do this without a cable needle. So we're just gonna carefully pull out of these and get these all back on the needle like this. All right, let me put these back over here. All right, so I need to hold these first two in back, okay? So that means, remember I said this yarn has to be in the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the yarn to the front and I'm gonna pass these over here and I'm just gonna skip them. Now I'm gonna move my yarn back to the back because I have to knit these two. So you can see that the yarn is in the front, this yarn, moved over those two stitches in the front, which means those two stitches are in the back. So now I can knit one and I can knit two. Now I have to take these two stitches and stretch them over the top of these two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go behind the needle and we're gonna grab these two stitches and we're gonna stretch the whole thing, okay? So I'm going to bring my yarn to the front just to get it out of the way, that's all. We're not gonna purl or anything crazy, I'm just moving it temporarily. So now I'm gonna to come to the back, I'm gonna grab these two stitches just like this. Okay, see how I've got them? Now, these two stitches here, I'm gonna slide my needle out of the work and they're gonna hang there like trapeze artists, so don't panic. I'm just gonna go, Oh my God. Okay, those two stitches are totally just hanging out there. See those? I'm just gonna very carefully go in one, in two, and now see how I'm stretching them in front of these back two? Now I can put my yarn back into the back like that. These were the two that we had passed to this needle earlier and we did not work them, so now it's time to work them. So we're gonna go one, two, just like that. Okay, exact same effect, a little bit scarier, but it ends up being a little bit faster, which is great. All right, let's look at the next one. So the next one here is a left leaning cable. See, it's opposite of this one, okay? So the execution is a little different too. So let's look at the explanation for that. So the left cable is slip the next two stitches to the cable needle and hold in the front of the work, then knit two. Okay, so it's pretty much the same thing that we did before, but we're holding it in the front. All right, so here's my cable needle. I'm gonna slip these two onto here. I'm gonna hold them in the front of the work this time. Then, I'm gonna get my needle in here and I'm gonna knit two off of these needles. This is so fiddly. This is why I like to avoid the cable needle. Look, it's stabbing down here. Also, it would be easier if I was using an actual cable needle, but I always just use a double pointed because I always have them on me. Okay, so I've knit two. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna forget about this needle again, and I'm gonna pretend that this one is that needle. Whoop. You like my technical sound effects? That's what makes knitting so great. Okay, so we're gonna knit this one and we're gonna knit that one, okay? So now I have stretched these stitches the opposite way. So this one's leaning this way and this one's leaning this way. It's hard to tell right now. It just looks like kind of a knotted mess and that's okay. It's because these stitches are not allowed to curve because they're still stuck on the needle and so they're made to be flat. But once they get a little further away as you work up, they'll roll over really nicely and look great. All right, so let's back out of that and let me show you how to do that without the cable needle. Boop. Okay, very carefully. Put these back on here. Okay, I'm gonna pass them all back over here. We're gonna do a little rewind. All right, so 
we are going to hold these in front. So I'm just going to slip one here and slip one here. When I go to knit this, the yarn goes around the back. So these two stitches are in front because the yarn's in back. So this one's quite a bit easier. So I'm going to knit this one and then I'm going to knit this one. Okay. So here are the two slip stitches and this time the yarn is not over the front of them. It's behind the back of them. So if I move my yarn, oh boy, get move my yarn to the front. You can see there's this big long piece of yarn right here that's going behind those two stitches. Okay. So these two are technically in the front. So now I'm going to grab them from the front because I held them in the front. I'm going to get those two on my needle just like that. And now these two are going to be flying trapeze artists hanging in the air. So we're going to slowly slip our needle out of all four of them. Okay. Oh, it's scary. Get back on this one and get back on this one. Oops, I spilled the yarn there. Okay. Now I can knit these next two. Knit one, knit two. Okay. And again, it's leaning left. It's the exact same result. All right. So now our pattern says to knit four and then we're at the end of round. So I am going to knit one, two, three, four. Okay. Now I'm going to grab a marker and I'm going to place a marker. Okay. Now I'm going to start all over again right here. Okay. So it's absolutely up to you if you want to use a cable needle or not, but it's nice because you'll do a row of the cables. And then if you look at the chart, you'll see that the very next row, or sorry, I keep saying row, I mean round, because we're doing this in the round. The very next round, you do these fun little, um, you know, pearl, pearl, but then in here, there's no cable. It's a knit. And then you'll see here's the little pearl section with the knit back loop. And then this is all a knit row. So normally the twists that you do in the yarn in a cable, um, if it's, if you're working flat and you turn it over, you'll pearl the whole right way back. Uh, if you're doing it in the round, you'll notice that there's a knit row in between. So we don't stack cables right on top of each other. We space them out by a row and that's what allows the cable to relax and really pop out of the work and start to look really nice. All right. You have a lot of work to do. You have to work that chart twice and then you have to stop on row six and then we're going to jump to chart two. Um, actually you can keep working chart two. Um, there is one uh, stitch in there, this one right here, it's a purl two together. Okay, so this starts the decrease row, but if you look at chart two, everything is the same in here. Okay, so this is a purl two together, and then you've got your knit through the back loop, purl two. We know what this is, we know what these are, and then up here you just have one purl. Okay, so let's look at the instructions. You're going to work that chart. Uh, four times, one time complete. Okay. So you're going to work through these four rows here, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to stop. You're only going to work that chart one time. That's it. Okay. Then we're going to jump to chart three, which is quite a bit more complicated. We have these guys, we know what this is and we know what this is, but we have these guys, which are a little bit more complicated. So I want you to work all the way through chart two and then I will meet you back here and we will learn how to do the cables with a decrease built in. So see you there. Okay. There's two more stitches that we have to learn for this. Um, you have gotten through chart one, you've gotten through chart two. Um, and now we're going to do chart three and I am going to show you the last two cables that are there because they're a double decrease. Now, before I showed you how to do the, um, cable with and without a cable needle, but in this case, you just have to have a cable needle or a double pointed needle in order to accomplish this. All right. So let's look at the chart. 
The first one is a, this crazy guy here, okay? So he's the right leaning, okay? So that's this one right here. So it's a two by two knit, uh, so it's a knit two together basically, but they do a left cable, or a right cable, sorry, we're looking at the cable right over here. So this is a right cable um, and it's a double decrease. So it's a little bit, it actually looks more complicated. And if you read this crazy thing, it says, slip next two stitches to cable needle and place in back, which we know how to do. Knit the first stitch from the left needle and the cable stitch from the left needle together, then knit the second stitch from the needle, needle from the cable, that must be cable needle, and the second stitch from the cable needle together. So anyways, um, this sounds really complicated. It's actually not that bad, so let's execute this. Okay. So we're gonna do the um, right leaning first, okay, the, the R, the RC, the right cable. All right, so it says you're gonna slip the next two stitches off like this, and you're gonna hold the work in back. We know all about that. So we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna go whoop, and put it in the back, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're gonna slide this cable needle behind this one. Okay, so they're trying to say knit the first stitch off of the left needle and the first stitch off of the cable needle together and then knit this one and this one together. So this is very similar to a three needle bind off. So if you've done that, you'll know what you're doing here. We're gonna pretend like we're gonna knit the first stitch on the right needle. Then we're going to also pretend like we're gonna knit the first stitch on the cable needle. So I am under both of those stitches I'm going to knit them at the same time like this, bring my thing to the front, and then I'm going to very carefully slip those first two stitches off of the needle. See, this guy in the back wants to come with it. You just hold still. Let me see. Let me get the front there. I'm going to push this one down and get that one off. Okay, cool. Now, it says to get the first stitch off the left needle, which is this one, and the second stitch off the cable needle. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go under this one, and then I'm gonna go under that one also, so I'm under both. I'm gonna knit them together, and then I'm gonna slip them both off. That's it, okay? So if you look, this is leaning to the right. Okay, so you've done a decrease because this is at the crown of the hat and we want it to um, get smaller. Uh, you can see I totally cheated and I'm not at the crown of the hat, but for those of you who blow right through these, um, these knit alongs, I didn't want you to be delayed by not knowing what that stitch was because I hadn't gotten my hat done yet. Okay, so I'm gonna, just gonna knit a few stitches and we're gonna get a little further so that you can see what the next one is. So the next one, the left leaning, you just take these two and you hold it in front, but you do the same thing. You bring it down like this, so the two needles are side by side, and you're going to knit this stitch. Oh, fingers are in the way. You're gonna knit this stitch and this stitch together, and then you're gonna knit this stitch and this stitch together, okay? So I'm gonna go under the cable needle, the first stitch on the cable needle, like I was gonna knit it since the cable needle is now in front. And then I'm gonna go under the first stitch on the back needle, the left needle, as if I was gonna knit it. See, I'm under both. I'm gonna knit, I'm gonna go out of this one and out of this one, and I'm gonna very carefully slip my needles off, the first stitches off of both of these needles. Okay, so two remain. So we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna go under this one, and I'm gonna go under this one, just like we would a three needle bind off, go through the both of them, and then I can pull this one off, and then I can slip this one off. And you can see this one is leaning left like that, and that's the double decrease, just like that, okay? But it also makes a faux cable. So this allows your pattern to continue right through the crown, so it looks like your cables continue even though they're not exactly continuing. So once you get all the way done with this chart, there's just a couple of knit two togethers and you're totally done and you have a hat. Now, hopefully um, you were able to um, follow the charts and learn something about charts and learn something about cables. Very exciting. 
Um, and if you want to, you can also uh, use some of the extra yarn that you might have to do a pom-pom. Or a lot of local knit shops will have these cute little pom-poms like we show in the following photo of the Lake Reed hat that you can add a little bit of detail to your cap before you throw it on and keep your ears warm for the winter. Thank you so much for joining us um, for the very first Street Along for Independent Street Yarn. Be sure to follow both Independent Street Yarn and Aurora Talks Knit on Instagram so that you can find out when the next Knit Along uh, or Crochet Along we lovingly call them street alongs, uh, is going to be so that you can get your yarn ahead of time. Uh, we will also post discounts for the yarn, uh, coupons for the website, so you can order your yarn ahead of time and uh, join in on the next one. So we'll see you in that one. Thanks, guys.